Good morning and welcome everyone to another Digital Service Squad webinar. My name is Ben Frisch with the uh, South Georgia Bay and Gray County Digital Service Squads. I'm joined today by Karen Gibson, <laughs> um, Amy Kells, and Rochelle Reynolds from our team. And we are talking about video and photography on a budget. But before I hand it over to Karen, who's going to take us through the webinar, just want to say, um, you know, our usual spiel, this, this <laughs> webinar is brought to you by Digital Main Street. Um, that's why we're here. And it is uh, supported by the um, Ontario government, the Ontario BIA Association and the Toronto Association of BIAs. And uh, here in the South Georgian Bay, we're managed by the Enterprise Center, uh, the South Georgian Bay Enterprise Center, Small Business Enterprise Center, <laughs> the lengthy name. Um, and in Gray County, we are managed by the Gray County Business Enterprise Center, and uh, they are uh, responsible for, you know, looking over the program, managing uh, this, bringing it to the area, and making sure that we're delivering the best possible uh, support to local businesses. So we're excited to be here and present uh, some more information for you. And as always, you know, we are available for digital marketing uh, consultation, it's free service. Uh, there are grants available through Digital Main Street and other programs that we can get into. So I highly recommend if you are uh, new to that and you wanna learn more um, and get our help, you can book a consult with us at any time. And we're gonna put the, uh, uh, the booking link in the uh, chat box here, the chat area and um, like I said, feel free to book a, a consultation with our team to get further support on all things digital marketing related. And the last thing I want to say is that as we go along with today's webinar, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat or the Q&A, and we will answer them as we go. So with all of that said and done, I'm going to hand it off to Karen, who's going to take us through our webinar. Thank you and take it away, Karen. Hey everyone, good morning. I'm glad you could all make it. Today, we're gonna to talk about video and photography on a budget. They say the best camera is the one you have with you. And most of the time, that's your smartphone camera. Everyone carries their phone everywhere they go. They're, they're portable, easy to operate. And with the image quality, almost as good as a DSLR, it's a gives that DSLR camera a run for its money these days. Um, but just because phones are easy and accessible form of photography doesn't mean that every shot you take will automatically be amazing. No matter what cam camera you shoot with, it's you the photographer and not the gear that makes the photo. Today, we'll learn how to get the most of your phone's camera with these tips and best practices. If I trip over my teeth, don't mind me. <laughs> okay. There are many benefits of using a smartphone. Smartphones are small and light, making them easy to carry and use in different situations. They are convenient as you can capture moments anytime, anywhere without needing extra gear or preparation. They allow you to share your photos and videos on social media instantly, which can help you connect with others and showcase your work. They enable you to back up your photos and videos to the cloud, which ensures that you won't lose them if your phone gets damaged or lost. They help you improve your skills. Smartphones help improve your skills by forcing you to work with the limitations of your phone camera, such as low megapixel count, fixed lenses, um, the lack of manual controls. This makes you, you pay more attention though to how you frame your shot or how you use the available light or how you balance the colors and how you position where your subject's sitting or standing, whatever. They allow you to experiment with different styles and effects using, using editing apps. You can crop, rotate, adjust contrast, saturation, brightness, 
and other parameters to enhance your image. You can also apply filters, presets, stickers, and other creative tools to express your vision. They enable you to learn from other photographers by sharing your photos on social media, platforms, and photo sharing communities. You can get feedback, inspiration, and tips from fellow smartphone photographers. You can also follow tutorials, guides, and challenges to improve those skills. They help you practice your craft every day. You can use your phone to document your life, explore your surroundings, tell stories of you or your business, and express yourself in your business. The more you shoot, the more you learn and grow as a photographer. Ooh, can I just add something there as well? Uh, Karen, sure. Um, that I have noticed um, that a lot of smartphones um, are uh, becoming more advanced or like smartphone cameras, I should say. Yeah. Um, and that's to say that like, um, well, I mean, a couple of things like it's no longer just one lens on the back of your phone. Have you noticed like a lot of them now have three? So, yeah. you know, they'll have a wide angle, um, a uh, medium range and a telephoto zoom lens. Um, so this uh, gives a lot of different options, right? In terms of mm -hmm. how you approach that filming, um, as well as even just manual controls. A lot of them now will have those full manual controls. So you can set, set the shutter speed, aperture, um, ISO, so like like you were saying they're really giving your yeah. mirrorless and dslr cameras a run for their money because like now you have all this control um creatively um visually and um and even on the you know you mentioned megapixels they're not that low <laughs> no, <laughs> like, no i guess they are yeah <laughs> i i work with a lot of businesses that you know they might um take uh take product photos and upload them directly to their website, mm -hmm. thinking this is, you know, a small photo. But the reality is that those are pretty huge photos directly out of your phone um, that are going to be even too big for a website and need to be optimized. Um, so all that to say that, uh, that it is a really solid uh, device for content creation um, of, of, many different kinds <laughs> yes exactly i only i always only felt though one small thing depending when i'm from the print era <laughs> so sometimes if i have zoomed into something and then let's say if i wanted to print it out there might be a problem a little bit of a problem with resolution that is just what I've noticed. But for web and stuff, I think it's still, well, it's an awesome way to go because it's still pretty good, but maybe not as good as the DSLR. If you're printing an image larger, let's just, so that said, next. <laughs> Composition is a way of guiding the viewer's eye towards the most important elements or the subject of your work. A good composition can help make a masterpiece even out of the dullest objects and subjects in the plainest of environments. Think about the kinds of subjects you usually shoot and how you can apply the following tips to your next social media piece, whether a photograph or video. They pertain to both. For example, using the rule of thirds, there's a built-in grid line, grid lines on your phone, which will divide your image into three horizontal and three vertical sections. Try to remember to place the subject on one of the intersecting points. As you can see from the, the you can barely see, see the lines, but see how the flower is placed on one of the intersecting points? That that's rule of thirds. It's makes the photo sometimes more interesting, of course, depending on what you're shooting. Leading lines, the, 
Leading lines use natural lines or shapes like a river, like in this shot here, that guide the eye toward what the main subject is. And framing, think about framing, uses the elements in a scene like these rocks here or trees or something that surrounds part of the image to draw the eye again to the subject. If you want to convey depth, include objects in the foreground, in the middle, and background. So here, foreground rocks, middle ground would be like the river, and the background is the mountains and the sky. That shows it all at once, so it creates depth in your photo visually. Viewpoint. This is one that even I forget about because we're so used to sitting in front of a camera with our eye like this and taking a shot standing up. Don't forget to look up and look down. Challenge yourself to change your visual viewpoint, which will make more interesting shots like these. This is looking up through through windows in the in in the ceiling and this is looking down from a stair it just creates visual interest another consideration in photography and vid video is the aspect ratio aspect ratio represents the relationship between the width and the height of an image it's important to know this as it could influence how you compose your shot Choosing the right aspect ratio depends on the goals and the preferences of you and your audience. And of course, where it will be shown or the platform you'll be posting it to. So as you can see here, I've just named the most popular ones. One by one um, is mostly for Instagram um, and, well, and Facebook too. A 16 by nine is a widescreen, um, TV, YouTube, cinema aspect ratio. Um, a lot of people like Ben shoot in 16 by nine. <laughs> um, nine by 16, which is the opposite way around. That's your vertical, that's stories, um, Instagram reels and TikTok videos. A uh, four by three is the normal aspect ratio of your mobile phone, which you can change in the phone itself, but it's the uh, the regular one. And a three by two is the is a DSL, so your thirty five millimeter equivalent DSLR or mirrorless and compact cameras. Um, three two ratio is, is the norm for there. So again, depending on what you're shooting four keep those ratios in mind and i would say too um that uh we are we're shooting less and less uh 16 by 9 and more 9 by 16 um <laughs> because of the popularity of reels right. and, um and tiktok and even youtube shorts uh is another option for that vertical right. video um and um that's why that's why if you haven't noticed my camera <laughs> angle is a little <laughs> bit more narrow uh because i have my uh camera mounted at my desk permanently in a vertical position um for those types of videos so um yeah so the aspect ratio is definitely important and and Absolutely. uh but it also makes your phone that much more um accessible when it comes to you know, it's hard. It's actually harder to mount a DSLR mirrorless camera on its side than it is to just take your phone. Out. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> we like ease of use these days. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. The following are some basic techniques to consider. Focusing and exposure. <laughs> Make sure the subject is in focus, activated by a tap on the screen of your phone. Uh, you can adjust the exposure via the slider that pops up as well. There's nothing worse than blurry overexposed images. It's better to underexpose an image 
as it can always be tweaked in your editing app. Look for the best light. The best light is natural light. Natural light helps make your products look the way they do in real life and doesn't require a lot of expensive equipment. Dawn and dusk are optimal times to shoot just about anything from landscape to portraits to wedding parties. Not only does soft dewy light radiate on your subject, but you also have, don't have to worry about shadows and highlights and, and um, everything's even, evenly lit. On the opposite end of the spectrum, don't be afraid of taking photos on cloudy days. This, the, the clouds act as one big filter, spreading the light out everywhere, resulting in soft and even light. Try to avoid direct sunlight as it creates harsh shadows and highlights, along with squinty eyes. <laughs> Headshot, um, instead, shoot in the shade, uh, which diffuses the light, creating a soft light that spreads evenly across your subject. If you're shooting indoors, um, do, do your best to be like near a window and avoid putting your subject between you and the window. Instead, put the window beside you and your subject, if you know what I mean. And then you can always bounce that light from the window with even just a white card on the other side to help you with any shadows that might be created shooting that way. Ben, you wanna add anything to any of that? Oh, um, yeah, no, that was great. I mean, I think the, it's the the touch focus is like always uh, something I'm surprised, yeah, people don't, uh, don't necessarily know about, don't think about, but it's super simple. And it also, usually when you touch to focus, it will, um, adjust the brightness uh, as well, you know, depending on your, your, um, your subject. So if your subject is more in shadow, when you touch to focus on that subject, it might need to brighten it up as well, because you've told it, that's what I want to shoot. <laughs> that's right. And I like the slider like that pops up when you hold the screen down. So then you can see a little slider and it, you can see it goes dark or light. So you can adjust that, which is really cool. It depends on the circumstances again, right? Awesome. Smartphone cameras often come packed with, come packed with settings and features that will help you to take different kinds of shots under a diverse range of conditions. There are a variety of modes to consider and each depends on what smartphone you own, either an iPhone or an Android type phone. Um, there's night, uh, live focus, portrait, macro, time lapse, slow mo, cinematic, video, panel, uh, pro, sports, action, and raw, just to name a few. Um, explore those settings and experiment with them. Like I've always said, there's always a delete button. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Digital to me is the way to go. I don't like that shot, delete. I don't like that one, delete. Oh, that one's okay. I'll keep that one and we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Um, I will point out too. So um, one thing, uh, especially with video, right, is stabilization is a really uh, important thing to think about. And, um, you know, a lot of people um, will go out and buy, you know, uh, couple hundred dollar worth um you know stabilizer that's going to hold as a gimbal it holds the phone um steady but um check in your settings because i noticed um my phone was when i first started using using it for video a little bit more that it was really shaky and um and when i went into my settings i noticed that the um the stabilization was turned off by default, which to me was like, <laughs> that's like, I mean, kind of important, especially yeah. on, a, on a cell phone where you're basically always going to be holding it by hand. And, and so, uh, then those stabilization, um, settings like are getting better and better every, uh, with every iteration of your phone. And, 
um, it's almost, I think it's going to make that sort of gimbal uh, accessory obsolete, you know, within the next couple of years, because it's just going to get so good, you're not yeah. going to need it. We do talk about that a little bit, in, yeah, as an accessory, but anyways, okay. Editing, editing your photos can help you improve the look and feel of your image, display your products in a professional manner, or create a great visual strategy for your social media net platforms. Editing provides creative control, image editing tools, filters, stickers, collages, text, and so much more. A lot of editing can be handled by your existing smartphone. Um, photo or video editing software, which is built right into the, to the camera or the smartphone. Most allow you to crop, add filters, adjust brightness, exposure, contrast, saturation, adjust hue, change the white balance, the list goes on and on. Um, but just to note, no amount of editing will make up for poor composition or blurry photos or videos. You cannot fix blurry photos <laughs> or overexposed. It's very difficult to do that. Photo editing can also be handed directly in your Instagram. You can add filters, adjust alignment, brightness, contrast and sharpness, warmth, saturation, color, fade, highlight, shadows, and add a vignette. Um, a post will allow you to create a carousel of slideshow of, of 10 images altogether. Um, it, a story will also allow you to create a collage of layout of up to six images, I believe. And that's just in your uh, Instagram app. So explore that because um, oftentimes if you're on, in a hurry and you're just gonna post to Instagram, I would just, I would use their um, photo editing. In addition to your smartphone's internal editing software, there are many more apps available for free or paid that you may wanna check out. Each have capabilities that may appeal to you depending on your goals. Here's a few to consider. This is just a few. There's so many, some of them are free, like I said, and some of them you have to pay for. But these are just a couple. Um, for photos, uh, there's Snapseed. Um, again, it will do masking, a tonal curve, adjustments, uh, content aware obje object removal, like backgrounds and things like that. Um, VSCO, um, they have a variety of filters and presets and editing tools. Um, there's Prisma Photo Editor, Adobe Photoshop Express, um, Foodie, that one, supposed, I've never used it, but um, Foodie enhances food photo, photos with filters, stickers, and editing. Yeah, I and I use Lightroom, but then I uh, have an Adobe account, so I have Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom on my phone and on my computer. So, uh, but I don't know if that's free to a point. Do you know, Ben? Lightroom. No, I don't believe it I, is. I, I don't think it is. No, I think it's, if you just wanted Lightroom, I think it's $9. But that's, there's so many, I can't even name all of them. <laughs> so, next. Um, there are also editing tools for video. Um, vi <clears throat> video editing apps allow you to edit videos on a mobile device on the go. This can help you create compelling content for your business, social media, or personal use. A video editing app can also provide you with multiple creative layers, such as audio tracks, text, transitions, effects, and more. It can also allow you to import and export videos across different platforms and devices. This list is but a small sample of available apps. Again, um, I've listed a few. Um, iMovie is on, in your Apple devices like um, iPad, 
um, and iPhone, Kind Master, um, Android and iOS, um, which would be your iPad, iOS, uh, Power Director, InShot, Adobe Premiere Rush, Filmora Go. Um, ben, you'll know way more about editing videos than me. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I mean, um, I don't, uh, I don't actually do much um, video editing on my phone. However, I will say um, uh, that um, that the editing tools available in like uh, TikTok and Reels and stuff, like if you're if you are um, uploading videos to those platforms, they do actually have some pretty great uh, features right in there. So. Um, you know, they're getting better and better all the time. So check those out. Um, and um, someone else was asking about costs. So these are all free, right? Or they at least have- Yeah, these, these ones are particularly free, yeah. And, so and they're not, this is just a small thing. <laughs> yeah, and the photo ones as well, they're free? Yes, yeah, yeah. And yeah, Susan just said she downloaded uh, Foodie. <laughs> oh, <all>. yeah. <laughs> um, Has she experimented with it? No, she said she just downloaded it. Oh, okay. Yeah, check, check it out. I mean, that's the only thing you can do, really. Um, make it sort of like a fun game. Like, you know, it's because, yeah, all of them do different things. And they can be really, really interesting. Um, and some do some things better than others and or add different capabilities. So I, you really have to check them out, really. You have to do a little bit of research, I found. Mm hmm um, someone else was asking, um, uh, well, they're saying that uh, they use Instagram Reels, um, but it seems somewhat difficult to use, uh, which I agree. I mean, that's why I don't necessarily uh, do it. And so what I uh, what I use, I'm in the same boat as Karen, like I pay for an Adobe account, um, Adobe Cloud, Creative Cloud. So I have um, Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, which is a full editing software. Um, but I have, um, I mean, iMovie, if you're a Mac user, you know, iMovie mm -hmm. can do quite a lot. Um, and, um, there was another one that I came across, um, uh, well, there's, yeah, I mean, Da Vinci. Oh yeah. Da Vinci. Um, heard of that. Yeah. um, is, a is another video editor. It's definitely like higher uh learning curve or like a steeper learning curve um but you know worth checking out if you're interested in doing um more on your computer um but yeah check out what you've got there um and i find it just from my little bit of experience with video i just find it very difficult as he said to edit video on my phone so I often found that it's easier just to do it on the computer, like as, yeah, you know, I don't know. But anyways, experiment because they, like I said, there's a lot of programs out there that will do a pretty good job of editing on the go. If that's what you really want it for, then I would suggest checking them out. Right. Um, yeah. Someone else is using um, CapCut is a free one they mentioned okay. um, so that might be worth checking out um and then just another question here about um about phone upgrade so someone is looking to upgrade their phone but wondering like sort of what's the cutoff point um minimum sort of uh iphone number uh for digital marketing so like 11 12 um or is it necessary to go to the highest available um, I'm not a Mac or Apple user myself, um, but um, so I, I can't really speak to that. I wouldn't think you, I would say, though, definitely you don't need to go like, you don't have to not go. Not the newest the one. Like yeah. I've got, I think mine's a, uh, I, this is the first time I've actually had an iPhone. So I think mine's an iPhone 13 and right. it, it takes Great pictures. Um, yeah, takes good video. I, I've done some little short things. At, 
I don't uh, think I don't think you have to t have the newest. That's just my opinion. Um, yeah, and so Brooke says she has a or they have a um, an iPhone 11, and it works great still. So, and I think yeah, my wife has like a 10 or 11, and it takes better photos than my Android. <laughs> Well, there you go. Yeah. There yeah. You go. Yeah. Again, um, a little bit of research, Google it. <laughs> Doesn't hurt. Um, it'll tell you um, what the camera offers, um, how many megapixels it is, and that kind of thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> If you're ready to take your smartphone photography to the next level, collecting a few extra tools can go a long way. And again, that depends on what you're shooting. Here are some that can help you achieve your photo goals. First up, lenses. Believe it or not, you can get lenses that snap on or click clip on over your existing lens at the back. Some even offer interchangeable lens system that lets you swap lenses quickly. Make sure to choose ones that work with your phone though, um, and for the kind of photography you wish to, to shoot. Um, because yeah, for, depending on your phone, I mean, if it's an Android, it would do different lens to an iPhone lens, right? Um, there's telephoto, uh, which is, good for sports, wildlife and action. Some photos may, um, some phones may already have a telephoto lens like we mentioned. For the rest, you can get telephoto lens that offer two times to 12 times zoom to get you real close to the subject. So in other words, if you're sports and you're in the nosebleed section and you wanna take a photo, that would be a telephoto lens. A macro lens is good for flowers, bugs, and small items like jewelry um, with up to 21 times magnification for super close close-ups, like products, some product shots and things, if you need to go that route. I don't think you necessarily do because even in the iPhone, um, you can they have a macro setting on there so when you get close to something really close it'll take a picture and it's pretty pretty darn good a wide angle lens uh, it's great for architecture or interiors and landscapes um, with over 120 degrees and up to 150 degrees of field of view that means like this way like your eye shot <laughs> that that's what that feel wide angle lens There are adjustable tripods with connectors made for smartphones, mini tripods, and even adapters that can help you connect your smartphone to your DSLR tripod. Take advantage of an extra still shot with your phone and you'll see the payoff in your nighttime shots, self portraits, and more. Tripods provide stability and keep images sharp. Um, they produce better photos in low light because then you avoid like camera shake. Um, they allow, it allows you also to think about your shot before you even take it, like uh, the position, um, your composition, the angle of which you're taking your photo, because you have to look at it while it's stable. You look and then you, oh yeah, okay, I'd like to move it over a little bit, et cetera. That's what I mean by that. Um, you can shoot self portraits as opposed to handheld selfies, which is kind of good because I always find <laughs> selfies don't always take the best picture um, resolution wise. So you may want to consider, depending on what you're, again, what you're using it for. Um, it'll take panoramas, where, which will allow you to stitch multiple shots together. That's what a panorama is. Um, and it makes macro close-up photography a lot easier because then you can zoom in, you have this, you have no camera shake, and you can shoot from there. Lights is another accessory. Uh, your mobile device probably has a flash like mine does um, or LED lighting system built into it, but it's not the most flattering. Um, it, it sort of 
washes out it sort of creates a lot of harsh shadows and things so you may not want it depend again on the circumstances uh, light, lighting accessories will help you expand and enhance the lighting quality of your stills and videos by creating more of a softer light um, most of those devices um, produce like daylight balanced lighting which is a lot nicer than you know your indoor what are they whatever they call <laughs> i can't remember it's the tip of my tongue incandescent i think incandescent <laughs> incandescent which is kind of a yellow light as opposed to a sort of brighter white light so again depending on the circumstances um which we mentioned before um accessory bars or rigs and a gimbal, those are some, an accessory bar or rig is, is designed to hold all of the accessories like your light, your microphone and, and your phone all together in one place for you to shoot. Uh, a gimbal on the other hand is, is great if you want to steady a handheld held video and which uh, Ben mentioned before, it's, it's got a, it uses sensors and motors to stabilize and support when you're moving around with your uh, smartphone. But again, because of the image stabilization type uh, thing that's in your phone or getting better, um, you may soon not require that. Microphones, again, um, it's not, terribly necessary, but depending again on what you're shooting, um, an external microphone can provide um, a significant boost in quality. And it also has a tendency to reduce background noise when you're recording something like um, street noise, like maybe cars going by or that kind of thing. So that's a consideration, depend again what you're shooting. And other, well, um, when we talked about putting your camera on a, uh, on a tripod, tripod um, a remote shutter um, is a great accessory because you just take, you press a button to take the photo rather than having to touch your phone. And because touching your phone might produce shake, which would create a blurry shot. Whereas with the remote shutter, you've got that in your hand, you don't touch the phone, you click a button, it takes a picture for you. Um, also, another thing I thought I'd mention is, but now we have cloud and all that kind of thing. Um, you can get portable battery packs um, because especially if you're shooting a lot of photos or videos, which you probably won't for hours on end, but if you, you may want something um, that is an outside source to juice up your phone on the go, I guess. Okay. Um, Karen, just a couple yeah. que oh, questions um, regarding, uh, so there's two questions. So the first one, uh, just going back to lighting. Um, yep. So is the light box uh, good enough for lighting or should I get a ring light also? Um, what kind of uh, light box is best? I think so the term light box usually refers to um, an actual box, um, usually for product photography. And what it yep. does is you put your product inside that little, uh, the little box, and then you shine lights uh, on the sides or top, uh, however you want to, uh, to light your product, but essentially, yeah, the light box is more for product photography mm -hmm. and sometimes they do come with lights, but, um, yeah, most I times. Think I got, yeah. I think I got a kit years ago, a light box kit. It came with the light. Yeah. I think two lights and the box itself and the box is made out of like, sort of a filtery white material so that mm -hmm. the light shine through and doesn't cast shadows but gives you light but yeah it's basically for product photography 
Um, but they might also be thinking if you're also if you're comparing it to a ring light, you might also be um, thinking about uh, softbox. That might be the term you're looking for too. So oh. softbox is like a, usually a, a light fixture um, that has the same kind of material as the as Karen was describing around a softbox or a, yeah, but on a it's in Sorry. a box. Yeah, soft. <laughs> I'm trying to get my words here. So yeah, same as what Karen was describing on the light box, but the soft box is just attached to your um, your main light as well um, that you might have mounted. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, a ring light is, um, is certainly doable. Um, like it is meant to be just like yeah, mounted yeah. right in front of your camera. Um, mm -hmm. They sell a lot of like handy, really handy, actually um, ring light accessories that have a phone clip built right mm -hmm. into it. Mm -hmm. And and then it'll also like clip right onto your desk. So you can just, yeah, you know, yeah. set it up. And yeah, like this here. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Um, so something like that is a super uh, simple but effective kind of setup. And, um, but it does, I will say, you know, it does give you a very flat sort of look. Um, it often reflects like right into your eyes. So when you see those people with like the rings, the white rings in their eyes, <laughs> you know, they're using a, a ring light. Um, but again, you know, it's simple. It's, it's really clear and it's clean. Um, and then the next upgrade would be, um, would be yeah like just a soft box like if you wanted to you go to um and and set that up i have two lights uh for myself uh that both range in in price and are um uh are yeah varying <laughs> uh, i guess it depends it de again it all all of these things depend on what it is that you want to achieve? What is your goal? So if you're going to do a lot of webinars um, or, or workshops online and things like that, well, then, you know, you may want to, depending on the lighting in your room, you may, may want to, you know, use the soft, soft box or you may want to use the ring light. If, or a lot of people, like if they're doing workshops on how to paint or something, um, you know, their camera is facing down like this, well, they may need different lighting again. Like it depends on on what yeah. you're doing or if you're just shooting products or if you're just shooting your business folk, your your people that work with you. Like it depends on what you, that you're shooting. So yeah, um, to clarify, Susan, who asked that question uh, is using it for products. So definitely, yeah, I would say like softbox, yeah. which is the actual box you put your product in uh and then um you know you can use uh professional lights or you can even use just like um i've i've used just like hardware store kind of uh clamp mm -hmm. on clamps yeah yeah with like put a soft white light bulb in one of those kind of clamp on fixtures and that can work too you know like um, on the budget, it, <laughs> it'll give you light <laughs> and that's kind of, and if you, if you put like, let's say a, just for an example, a chair by the window, but the windows beside the chair, you have the chair and then you drape the chair with a uh, white paper and you like, and put clamps on, and then you put your product on the chair with the light coming in through the window. The only other light that you may need is just you need to diffuse it. So on the other side, you could use a whiteboard so that the light from the window bounces off the light, the whiteboard and onto your subject. So that's again, that's um, DIY, <laughs> a DIY for some product shots that you don't even have to get any lighting. If, if you have a place that has a window, like uh, I guess a sliding glass door, maybe. Just for an example. Yeah. Um, sorry. Two more questions here, real quick. Um, microphone okay. recommendations. Oh. Um, um, yeah. There's I like I like um, Rode as a 
brand just i mean they have got a lot of options for uh lavalier microphones both corded or um or cordless that some of them can be plugged directly into your phone um which is a nice uh nice accessory to have for sure um so definitely yeah check that out some of there are some microphones too you can just get that'll um you know a cheap lavalier microphone that's what's pictured here yeah <laughs> And that will just plug right into your phone and away you go. So, um, yeah, but I think, you know, Rode definitely more one of the more professional sort of brands that you could uh, look at getting. Um, and then lastly, just around um, product photos and photo sizes. So um, in a nutshell, someone's asking like, you know, they're taking photos and then having to resize them and and um looking for the best um way to sort of optimize those photos in bulk because they have a lot of products um one of the recommendations that i've made in the past is um is to try to eliminate as much of that post processing as you can with the photo so a couple of things you can, um, you know, if we going back to what Karen was talking about with the ratios, you know, if you need square photos, you can actually um, set up your phone so that it takes square photos. Mm -hmm. So that again, you know, that would eliminate the need to crop them. And then you can also set the resolution um, of the photos that you're taking. Again, your iPhone or your Android is taking by default, like some pretty large photos, as this uh, Sandy probably knows, um, you've had to reduce the sizes to be better optimized for your website. So um, by going into your phone settings and toning that way down, I mean, like, you know, for an online store, um, you know, a thousand pixels squared is probably like more than enough. Um, yeah, it's that's pretty huge um, mm -hmm. for for just a simple product photo. It's even um, actually, I mean, if you were to go 1080 by 1080, let's say that would be a versatile size yeah. because that's sort of your main sort of Instagram, Instagram size. Yeah. So it would work for social media, but then it also work on your website. Um, and uh, and and again, yeah, if you can reduce your post production uh, time on that, I would say set it up in your phone so that the images coming out of there are good to go directly to your, uh, website. And if not, I think not that I've used because I have all Adobe products, but, um, I think there's also a place online where you can upload a bunch of photos to, um, make them web ready. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, optimize them. I can't remember what it's called. Do you remember, Ben? I don't know. But anyways, there is a place, I believe, for free that you can optimize your photos online. That being said, I'd have to figure, find out who that is or what that is, because I have seen it. Last but not least, visual storytelling is a powerful way to connect with your audience because it allows you to tell stories through pictures. You can use photos and videos to help tell the story of who you are, what you do, and why it matters. Visual storytelling makes content more engaging, memorable, and shareable than plain text. Visual storytelling can convey your brand personality, its values and mes message in a way that resonates with your audience. It can communicate complex or abstract ideas in a simple and clear way that your audience can understand and relate to. to. It can motivate your audience to take the next step in their journey, whether it's buying your products, signing up for your service or joining your cause. Use visuals to tell your story and promote your business. 
any questions? <laughs> Um, I did find a um, a bulk uh, resizephotos.com, bulk resizephotos.com. Mostly, I think, for resizing and compressing the images, but I mean, that's a big part of the um, yeah. of the battle is, yeah, optimizing them for web. And it, I mean, almost looks too good to be true, this website. Like, it, there's no <laughs> sign up. It's free. It works in your browser, so you don't have to download anything. Just looks pretty, uh, pretty cool. And then uh, lastly, there's another question about social media management tool um, that works best for video or photos across multiple platforms. Um, oh. Rochelle, any thoughts on that one? Yeah. You want to jump in? Social yeah, I, I was thinking about that actually. Um, I don't know. I know. I know. Like sort of the, it, it kind of depends on what platforms you're looking at, right? Like if, mm -hmm. if we're just talking Facebook and Instagram, honestly, the, the built-in um, uh, app through um, business manager or, or uh, meta, meta business meta. suite or whatever it's called now, that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Um, yeah, I mean, take a look at something like later.com um, that only because like the, that's a freemium model so you can get by pretty far at least to start with. Um, I used to really like Sked Social, but I never used it for um, YouTube in particular. Um, and then like the big guns out there, like something like, um, uh, you know, Sprout Social uh, and and even like the HubSpot tool, th those are those are more expensive options for sure. But um, what you get with them is is more of that like flexibility uh, to cross post across um, different properties and accounts. Um, yeah, so that's that's sort of what I have to say about that for right now. Hmm. Okay. Later, it, yeah, later.com. Later, yeah. Yeah, but I, I don't have a lot of experience um, posting to YouTube specifically. Like that's not a, a medium that I've really worked in for any of the accounts that I've managed. So that's why I'm like mm, hesitating to, to sort of hedge my bets on those ones in particular. Hmm. Any other questions? might be about it um okay yeah and because we've um we've uh answered quite a few as we went along so i think awesome. um, I th there might be another question coming from carrie she started typing um um oh rochelle while we're, while we're talking about that i i just looked it up so a couple of um a couple that are being recommended here uh, specifically for those platforms would be Sprout Social, which I, I did uh, uh, mention. So that's that's good to know. Um, Agora Pulse, which I've heard really good things about. It's pretty robust. Um, and then Social B and Hootsuite. And I don't I don't know anything. Well, I know a little bit about Hootsuite. Like it's it's been around for a while. Okay. I don't know anything about Social B. Yeah. No. Um. So yeah. So. Uh, Carrie's asking about CapCut. CapCut was actually one of the platforms that someone else had mentioned, one of the participants. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not sure that any of us have any experience with it. But, no. um, but hey, Rachel oh, is chiming in. CapCut has a pretty simple learning curve and there are a lot of free guides. So perfect. Thanks, oh. thanks Rachel. Awesome, thanks. <laughs> um, and it sounded like a couple of the other participants also downloaded CapCut. So, oh, wow, there we um, go. Oh, oh well, we'll have to try that one. <laughs> um, ooh, okay. Any, um, how do you set your items for products, product photos, so they are all the same angle? Any tricks? Ooh, tripod for sure. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Tripod is a big part of that. Just so yeah. lock down your camera so that 
um, in the same position, level, whatever. Right. Yeah. That's your best bet. And then you shoot like I a long time ago I did a product shot on oh glasses, believe it or not. That was difficult because you know of the reflection and everything. But I basically had to do a bunch of test shots with it stabilized in a on a tripod and then it's kind of experimenting with light and how you know and that kind of thing because I would experiment first and once you've sort of got um, the right exposure and everything then you can take the rest of them but then you don't have to move your camera which is good yeah the other thing is you know if you're taking a few today and then going away, oh. coming back and taking a few more tomorrow or, you know, next week, whatever. Um, so um, I would say like anything you can do sort of on the surface of the, um, where you're photographing the object, if there's any way you can mark off like where that mm -hmm. object was, how it was positioned, even with some, you know, painter's tape, you, maybe you, um, you mark off the corners of where it was. And then when you're ready to take another one, you put it down and pull the tape back. Um, or, uh, or, you know, Karen, uh, pointed out earlier on the, um, the guidelines on your screen of your, your, mm -hmm. um, of your phone, even just remembering like how it's positioned within those guidelines can really help, uh, in a lot of ways to, mm -hmm. to, you know, um, get that same shot the same angle uh composition as before um and yes rachel says the tripod is a game changer for product shots mm -hmm. um, particularly when you're using a light box exactly yeah. oh yeah for sure and i think that might be it um oh wow good timing 11 o'clock perfect <laughs> you want to hit to the next slide there there we go. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Karen. That was amazing. And I think a lot of uh, great tips. And thank you. we can tell from the dialogue, too. I think there was a lot of uh, info sharing happening. And, and yes. uh, so that was awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> and again, anyone who's uh, eager to connect with the Digital Service Squad, here's all of our info. We're going to follow up with a, a link for you directly as well to uh, book a consultation with us. We can work on all things digital marketing, not just content and media, but um, we can take a look at your website and social media and more, and also talk about eligibility for different grants and programs within digital Main Street. So again, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Karen. Thanks, Amy and Rochelle for joining us and your support. We will see you guys next time. Thanks Bye so much. Me. Have a great day, everybody.